And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy. You know, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some of our first impressions of the latest games that are coming out. Well, today we're talking about Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's me, Jake Baldino, and I gotta say, man, this game that was formerly announced as Gods and Monsters and then became this weirder title, straight up, I was not interested in it. I absolutely dismissed it as, you know, an uninteresting looking game that pretty much just straight up did a lot of the same gameplay mechanic stuff as Breath of the Wild. That's what it looked like, down to open grassy fields, the way the climbing works, gliding, puzzles using physics and telekinesis type stuff, the same types of puzzle dungeons, all of it. It was just too on the nose, too similar for me. But now, after getting it and playing tons of it, dude, I will happily admit I was wrong. I was up my own butt here. This game is a lot of fun, and you probably heard this from a lot of other folks already, but out of the last few open world games Ubisoft has put out, this is clearly the best one. It's the most fun and rewarding. Yes, it very clearly borrows elements from Breath of the Wild. I think as you play the game, you'll discover it's also inspired by a lot of other things. It's got a vibes of other games, but the Breath of the Wild thing is there. It was heavily inspired by it. I know many people will be put off by that. I initially was, like I said, but where they get creative with it and do different things and just kind of embrace the fun is where I found myself just having a blast. Just so you know too, this footage was captured on PC and there aren't really any spoilers or anything big like that. Now, Immortals is a Greek mythology adventure. It kicks off as a story being narrated by Prometheus and Zeus. It's right off the bat incredibly lighthearted and just goofy and fun. I think the jokes and the delivery are gonna be really up to your taste. You're gonna either love it or find it a bit cringeworthy and annoying. I get it, but I actually, I found most of it pretty enjoyable tongue-in-cheek stuff. It reminded me of like the old Jack and Daxter game cutscenes, but they narrate the entire game. So even as you explore the environment and do stuff, they'll occasionally pipe in and have some voiceover commentary. So be prepared. I just, I just like how they made Zeus like the obnoxious douche he really is. And it's just funny how he complains or tries to change the story and basically is just the low hanging fruit the whole time. I found myself just mildly chuckling along most of the way, only groaning a couple times and just being entertained especially as a fan of Greek mythology. You know, some of the references and inside jokes were pretty good, man. Now, the gameplay is satisfying. The world you're in is fairly large, but not like insanely unreasonable. You can scope out stuff with your first person scanning vision and ping stuff to go check out. And then you can glide around on wings or get a mount or just sprint around. You can, of course, climb up pretty much anything and swim as long as your stamina meter holds out. Story missions to progress pop up around the map, but it's balanced with a good degree of freedom, especially with the exploration. To improve your character in any way, you're gonna need to venture out and explore and not do main quests. This is a character you create, by the way. Uh, face options are limited, but there's enough room to have some fun with it here and there. Character building itself though, like the RPG elements, is just complex enough and satisfying how it, it ties into exploration for me. You collect resources in various ways in the environment and then you can dump those into upgrading any swords, armor set, helmet, bow to level them up, improve their stats, and expand their passive perks, but it takes some work. You're not doing it every five seconds. You gotta really earn it. Now, in terms of that loot, weapons, armor sets, helmets, it's doled out in a pretty nice and reasonable way. Not too much, not too little. Enough time to really enjoy an armor set and the buffs it may provide that you prefer, and new stuff being doled out in a chest, you may find just enough to get excited over finding something new. It feels just right for me. You also find portals to mini dungeons that are mostly puzzle oriented, and there you can typically find a useful item or ability, and then some of Zeus's lightning, which you can then use to increase your stamina meter so you can do more, run further, climb higher. You have potions mapped on the D-pad and you can craft more of those or you can upgrade the potency of them, and make them more useful. You can collect a resource to then spend to increase your health bar too. All of this and more stuff that I don't have time for can be done at a home base hub and it's fun to just head home and cash in all that stuff you scooped up along the way and then plot your next course or your next mission or your next area to explore and then glide back down onto the map. This loop, it's a good one. It feels addictive. It's meaningful, and it's enough to chew on for a while without making the game feel like a bloated open world checklist session. You know what I mean? It might look like one, but it's, it's not. 
there's always a random group of enemies to stumble upon, sometimes an overpowered one, uh, there's always a random building with an environmental puzzle, something interesting, uh, but a lot of it just feels a little bit more handcrafted, which is nice. And then also, you know, the variations between the different chunks of the world helps too. The puzzles are a bit more hit and miss though, you know, they're similar to Breath of the Wild's physics and magic ability stuff that you would do with that tablet, but they don't feel quite as smart or clever. There are some clear good moments, but a lot of them are mind-numbingly simple or just painfully monotonous. Just not as strong as they could be considering a chunk of the game really relies on them. Some of them just rub me the wrong way or bored me. The game is gorgeous, I will say. I, I think YouTube's compression will make it look bland and ugly here. I've seen a lot of people online say that the game just looks generic, plain, lame. Uh, but if you have this on a decent PC or maybe the pro version of consoles or, or next gen, this is a very pretty game. The cartoony art style is really amped up through vibrant colors, nice particle effects, a surprising amount of detail, foliage, and when all of that is in motion and it's moving on a nice monitor, it's just pretty easy on the eyes. I didn't talk about combat yet though, but it is fun. There's a bow and arrow, a light attack, heavy attacks, a dodge, with a bit of a well-timed slow-mo window and a parry. Uh, there's the ability to knock down an enemy's secondary stun bar with heavy attacks and then make them stunned and then leave them more vulnerable to damage. It's all fairly straightforward at first, but it gets better as you grow your character and spend collected points on a skill tree. I think it's a pretty damn good skill tree. There's a lot on this tree from passive stuff to bow abilities, sword abilities, axe heavy attack abilities, and just stuff ranging from aerial juggling, sprint attacks, longer attack combinations, stuff like that alongside efficiencies and swimming, climbing, you know? So it all gets more satisfying as you put more time into it, and the enemies get a bit more exciting here and there. So reward-wise, exploring gives your character things that will make exploring a little more easier and a little more fun. And then the more you do explore and get to new stuff, the more you're gonna earn to upgrade your character, which then makes combat a little more fun because of those other abilities. You see what I'm getting here? Everything's connected and it just works pretty well. Simple, but it's good. So basically, if you can't tell, it's a game very much derivative of Breath of the Wild, but with its own cool little world, sense of humor, fairly different character progression, you know, more RPG style, and just a Ubisoft game with less bloat and more focus on raw fun factor. It's got multiple difficulty modes. It'll probably take you around 25, 30-ish hours, depending on how you play, and that's pretty middle of the road. And yeah, I was just genuinely surprised with how much fun I've been having with this game. I'll eat my words, you know, I really didn't expect much from this one. But the story, the setup, the Greek mythology, exploring the world itself made me smile, and the character progression and light RPG systems just kept me hooked. A couple annoying things here and there, like puzzles and some whack stuff. But overall, pretty damn solid, man. And uh, if you hate Ubisoft, you still might not care, or maybe you just hate Breath of the Wild gameplay, you, you might not care, but I think this one might squeak by and be massively underrated. It's a busy holiday season. I'm with you, but uh, we got another one here, people. We got another good one, so uh, add it to the backlog if you got one. And obviously, I would definitely recommend it for people who loved Breath of the Wild. If you scoured that game top to bottom and beat the hell out of it, uh, and you're just kind of itching for more like an addict, I think this will definitely satisfy that craving. But I'd also say, uh, you know, for fans of more Darksiders-style stuff, it kind of feels a little bit like that here and there. So, uh, yeah, that's a before you buy. You know how this goes down by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. But of course, now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Are you like me? Do you think this game is kind of like a diamond in the rough in terms of recent Ubisoft titles or just maybe open world games in general? Do you think this will hold you over until Breath of the Wild 2? Are you mad that I'm comparing it to Zelda? Are you mad that I said it was good? Whatever. Let's talk. I want to hear what you guys are thinking about this game. If you have been playing it, thanks for your patience with this video. We didn't get it early, so we had to work extra hard on this. But uh, let me know what you're thinking. Anything at all. If you enjoyed this, though, maybe we helped your decisions buying it or playing playing it at all, clicking the like button does help us out. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, you know, maybe consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.